Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is Jason, host of Fighting Words Financial, and today we're gonna to be discussing a really interesting company, and this is a really nice video that I put together for you guys, uh, so stick around to the end. We're gonna be talking about a company that is looking to revolutionize many different industries through the manufacture of synthetic DNA. Uh, yeah, guys, you heard that right. This company creates DNA using state-of-the-art technology and then provides this synthetic DNA to companies you know, worldwide in a wide variety of sectors. We're gonna talk about how they do that. And we're gonna talk about what this means for your investment portfolio. The company that is the subject of this video today is Twist Biosciences. They've been getting a lot of media attention over the last year or so due to their potential uses of their synthetic DNA technology in combating COVID-19. Well, folks, there's actually a lot more going on with this company as we're gonna cover in this video and you'll see later on. All right, guys, so let's dive in. Let's learn a little bit more about Twist Biosciences and what the future holds for them as a company. Twist Bioscience was founded way back in 2013. I know, folks, it's not really that old of a company, but it was founded by Emily LaProust, Bill Banyai, and Bill Peck. Spearheading the project was Emily, who earned her master's in industrial chemistry while still living in France, and then obtained her PhD in organic chemistry and nucleic acid chemistry after moving to Houston a few years later. While working for Agilent Technologies, a company that operates in the healthcare equipment sector, Emily decided to take her expertise and launch her own business in the field of synthetic biology. Now this field is incredibly interesting and potentially has some far reaching benefits for a whole host of industries. To put it quite simply, synthetic biology is a field of science in which living organisms are redesigned for valuable purposes by engineering them to have new abilities. This area of science has been described as a disruptive technology due to the potential to create new solutions for problems in healthcare, agriculture, and even manufacturing. Twist Bioscience is one company that is researching and providing solutions for all of these challenges. Through their synthetic DNA manufacturing, Twist can partner with these companies from a wide variety of sectors and provide them with disruptive technologies and solutions. In turn, these companies can then utilize it in their operations to improve processes and solve problems. So I guess you could say that in terms of the genomic revolution and genomic stocks and genomic companies in general, Twist acts as a B2B company or a business to business company in the realm of synthetic DNA. So what exactly is Twist Bioscience doing right now? Since its launch in 2013, Twist Bioscience has grown at a pretty rapid pace due to its attractiveness and the potential uses of its synthetic DNA products. Having moved to San Francisco in 2016, Twist managed to take advantage of the decreasing cost of production and innovations in synthetic DNA manufacturing and allowed them to offer their products to companies at an attractive rate. Emily LaProust and her team actually invented a machine that automates the construction of synthetic DNA, reducing the need for manual labor. To put this in perspective, before they created this machine, synthetic DNA would have to be manufactured manually by PhD students. These students would basically perform the mind numbing task of sitting around and moving liquids from one test tube to another all day long. Sounds like a lot of fun, right? Well, as it turns out as a manufacturing process, this was pretty sluggish and was costing Twist Bioscience a lot of money as they couldn't meet the demand for their products in a timely fashion. It was really the development of this machine that made Twist Bioscience one of the most attractive prospects for companies who are interested in synthetic DNA production. On top of product optimization, Twist Bioscience has also revolutionized how accessible synthetic DNA products can be. In something that actually kind of blows my mind, you can even order synthetic genes right off of their website just by uploading the string of A's, G's, C's, and T's yourself in the form of a text file. It's actually pretty amazing. Along with these genes, Twist also allows companies to purchase antibodies for COVID-19 and they're working on antibodies for other diseases as well. These antibodies are created in Twist Bioscience headquarters and can be used to help neutralize the effects of the coronavirus. One of the things that Twist Bioscience is doing right now that I personally find the most satisfying and is just now starting to hit public consciousness is they are looking to use DNA for solutions when it comes to digital information storage. Now, this idea is just in its infancy right now, and it's something that I want to discuss in more depth in later videos, but it's something I wanted to just briefly touch on right now. With the ever increasing volume of digital data in today's world, companies are beginning to realize that they are running out of places to store it. Now, if you go and look this up on the internet, there's actually a lot of articles that are written about 
there's going to be a point sometime in the near future where we will not be able to produce enough hard drive space in the way we make them right now to accommodate all of the data that we're creating. And DNA data storage offers a more dense way of doing this. And we're going to take a look at how that's done right now. Now using DNA as a data storage method is something that I've covered in another video kind of briefly, but it's definitely worth looking at again because it's an extremely important concept and it's one that's kind of hard to understand. So think of it this way and let's look at the scale of the problem here. Every minute Google conducts millions of searches and people watch millions of videos on YouTube, send hundreds of millions of emails, millions of tweets and post millions of photos on social media platforms. By 2020, an estimated 1.7 megabytes of data is going to be created every single second per person globally, which translates to roughly 420 zettabytes in a single year, about 418 billion one terabyte work, you know, hard drives worth of data. That's a lot of data, folks. That's a mountain of hard drives. Assuming a population of the world of say roughly 7.8 billion and predicted growth rates, the magnetic or optical data storage systems that we currently use right now uh, in the form of ones and zeros, it cannot last for longer than, longer than a century. We're gonna run out of room to store hard drives. Furthermore, the data centers that we use right now take huge amounts of energy to store all of this data. In short, we're about to have a serious data storage problem that's only gonna become more severe over time. Fortunately, nature has provided us a way to store information in an incredibly stable and dense manner. And I covered this before on the first video that I ever did on the genomic revolution. The alternative to hard drive is actually using DNA based data storage. DNA, which consists of long chains of nucleotides that we see in, you know, as A, T, C, and G instead of ones and zeros are basically nature's information storage medium. Data can be stored and is stored in the sequence of these letters. The sequence of these letters in living creatures oftentimes literally does nothing but encode for the production of proteins, you know, controls behaviors, uh, controls in, you know, immune information, all kinds of things like that. So this is information that's transmitted from one living organization to another. This really is not as far-fetched as it sounds. In fact, it's actually happening all the time and it's not science fiction at all. Emily LaProust, of Twist Bioscience perhaps best describes the process of turning DNA into this new form of information storage. When a scientist uses you know, their DNA editing software on the computer to send a text file that represents a gene that they wanna make in synthetic DNA and have it printed on a silicon wafer. That text file that gets transmitted is taken you know, and transmitted as a long string of four base letter systems, A, T, C, and G, and gets translated back into that two base system of ones and zeros which is actually less dense and less efficient, but it's translated by the computer on the other end. They're able to turn that strings of ones and zeros on the other side of that data transaction back into that much more data dense four base system of A, T, C, and G. It's starting to make a lot more sense to think of DNA as a really efficient and a highly dense storage of uh, you know, data storage medium that's a lot less energy intensive uh, to transmit and to store that data. So DNA can accurately store massive amounts of data at densities far exceeding that of electronic devices. As I mentioned before on my previous video on the genomic revolution, the simple bacterium E. coli, for instance, has a storage density of about 1019 bits per cubic centimeter, which according to calculations published in 2016's Nature Materials by George Church of Harvard University and his colleagues, at that density, all of the world's current storage needs for a year could be met by a cube of DNA that measures about a meter on each side. But in terms of future use, it looks like using DNA as a natural encoding system that's more energy efficient and more dense than the ones and zeros we use right now, that looks like that's something that's coming in the future. And the prospect of DNA storage really isn't theoretical at this point. It's already been used in a couple of different applications. Uh, including this one. In 2017, that, served, that same group that I mentioned at Harvard that was run by that scientist named Church, they adopted a CRISPR DNA editing technology to record images of a human hand and put it into the genome of, e. coli, of, of an E. coli bacterium. Those uh, images were actually read back out with an efficiency and, a, and an accuracy of greater than 90%. And this is kind of their first try at this. 
So this technology is evolving right now. It's being used right now. Where those applications go in the future, I don't know. I don't think anyone knows at this point. But researchers at the University of Washington and Microsoft Research are developing fully automated systems of writing, storage, and reading data that's encoded in DNA. It's going to take some time, of course, before this new method of data storage makes it past you know, the novelty stage and into full development. But that day is coming, and uh, we're going to be talking more about this in the future. So what does the future hold for this company and their stock price? If I take a look at the field that Twist Bioscience operates in right now and the types of products that they're offering, you might be wondering whether this company is about to make huge waves in the stock market. Well, let's take a look at that. Twist only went public in 2018, and between then and January of this year, their stock price increased by about 1,500%. Also, in the past year, Twist's revenues have grown by about 68%, which I'm not sure justifies a 1,500% run-up, but the future is going to tell whether or not that is really justified. I think it's pretty impressive that this company has grown like this, uh, especially in this phase that they're in right now. Analysts are predicting 33% growth in revenue this year with 38% growth in revenue projected for 2022. So if I wanted to take a more reasonable approach to what I expect from revenue growth from Twist, those estimates of you know 33 and 38% growth over the next two years, I think those are eminently reasonable. And uh, I think that it could be a bit of a reflection too of the beating that Twist has taken recently in their stock price. They're down about 38% from, from January's highs. Well, why is this? Well, Twist is burning through their, mar their mountain of cash right now at a pretty alarming rate and is not expected to be profitable anytime soon. Again, this is to be expected from a company that just went public in 2018. It's a growing firm in a growing field and it's just two years, three years after their IPO. However, this synthetic biology market is becoming increasingly saturated with competitors and there's kind of a race to the bottom taking place which has the potential to squeeze margins even further. So if I wanted to bottom line my thoughts on Twist right now as an investment opportunity, I think that much like CRISPR Therapeutics, Twist is a company that's leading the way in the innovations that could shape many industries in the future. There's no doubt that the products they offer solve problems today and that there's never going to be a shortage of demand for synthetic DNA in the future, but it's going to be provided by a broad range of companies. However, it's really hard for me to see an immediate path to profitability for this company uh, anytime in the short term. Uh, in the long term though, I do feel like they're going to be profitable, but I feel like their stock price right now is probably a little bit too high. And there's, even after this recent drop off, and there's going to be plenty of opportunities to make investments in this company in the future. If you bought in at a price that's pretty high, uh, I would think about averaging down at this point. If you're looking to get into this company, I think that, imply, that employing a dollar cost averaging strategy to get into this company over time is going to be a better strategy than trying to time a dip or something like that. They're a young and growing company and volatility is going to be expected and investors should be prepared, prepared to weather storms and stand for the long term. So definitely I think that dollar cost averaging is a great approach to this and it's going to remove some of the emotions that you might feel out of trading and trying to catch the dips. Anyway, folks, that's enough for me from on Twist Biosciences today. I want to thank everyone who tuned in. It really means the world to me. And if you take a second to hit that thumbs up for to like the video and subscribe to my channel, it would really help out a lot. Also, let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are on Twist Bioscience uh, are and whether or not you see them being profitable in the next three to five years. And if you can, folks, please check out my Patreon. It's only $5 a month, and there's a great group of people on there, and they can help you get your investment knowledge to that next level. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you next time.